Alrighty, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, we are at 5 o'clock on um, Tuesday, September 17th. Um, we start by, a, and we're calling the meeting to order, we're approving the minutes of the September 3rd, 2024 regular meeting, action likely. Um, any uh, discussion of the minutes? Yeah, I just, I had a question about the conversation. Um, like, I didn't see anything captured in there with uh, the solution for the culvert by Richard Cowles around asking Eric to, you know, proceed with the sheriff's department or any of that. That doesn't, minutes don't capture any of that. Sarah, um, Liz yeah. said she was going to call Well, um, so that was... Oh, you mean there's nothing about the sheriff in here? There's, there's, the minutes don't capture any part of that conversation okay. that we even had it. Um, was that an executive session? No. No, there was the thing about the chair. He was going to put a chair out there. Yeah, I think it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a conversation about uh, us, us moving forward to finish the job by getting a sheriff there, and I believe you said that you were. Yeah, so, yeah, I did, so, yes, that, but that wouldn't be reflected in the minutes because I did that stuff after right. all that. Right, I mean, that's, yeah. I think that's his question. So, I think, yes, we didn't put, I guess, Sarah, you didn't mention anything in the minutes about potentially bringing a sheriff in as an option. It was something you guys were talking about, but it was, yeah. you know, your minutes, not ours. If you want me to put it in the minutes, I can put it in the minutes. Yeah. Sarah doesn't usually put every single word in the minutes, but if, if you would like that in the minutes. I just felt like that was an important part of the conversation as far yeah. as a, the resolution that we were moving towards. Was to get experts, expert letters, and to talk to the lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a whole piece of that conversation that I felt like should have been captured okay. wasn't captured. Is that the case? Should we vote on it? Uh, why don't we pass over it? And then Sarah, can you um, just edit the minutes? Oh, maybe go back to the, the go back to the recording. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, so let's pass over that. Um, the uh, proving the agenda for September 17, 2024, regular meeting. Are there amendments to the agenda, Sarah? Yes, and you can see your amended agenda, and there's star. So the two stars are, if necessary, an executive session. Yeah, hold on, I don't know, I don't see an amended agenda. It says amended agenda right under the new Oh, line. if necessary. Okay, yeah, okay, gotcha, yep. And then the other one is the right-of-way permit to install a CD fiber cable under North Fair Swamp Road using the, the permit you guys have just, you've just approved. The first permit. Okay. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the minutes with the... I wanted to ask if we could add something. Oh, yep. Um, yeah, we, we don't have a, uh, that I know of, and I don't think you do, Eric, we don't have a policy on uh, are we fixing people's driveways or we aren't? What's the criteria for fixing it or not fixing it? And I think we should have one because people are asking, mm -hmm. no disrespect to, mm -hmm. and He's not sure whether he wants to do it or not, or whether it's allowed or whatever. Okay. So I think we should have a have a discussion about that. Yes. Okay. Sarah, I mean Zara. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, we have it on our agenda for Thursday. So if you want to want to jump the gun, I can tell you. That or your roads. Yeah. Every committee. expert I've talked to, um, the road committee. You know, we were going to uh, talk about it, but everybody I've spoken to feels that it would be more beneficial for this town to take on the holistic nature of the way the water runs and just mm -hmm. take over the culverts. FEMA also has said to us that um, we are more likely to get reimbursed if that is in fact our policy. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so. so can, we, can I just chime in here? So you, what that calls for is modifying your highway ordinance, right. which needs to be modified right. anyway. And that requires many, many steps, legal steps, including public notice and education, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, more than just a policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so why don't we have no action, and we can talk about we can talk about it. But
but we can, because I think we do need to sort of address what we've been doing and moving forward what we may do in the interim, right? Like, until, you know, until winter comes. Um, so let's talk about that, but I think Sarah's right, we'll need to put that on our agenda to talk about, because we do need to change other things in the highway ordinance as well. So we'll talk about this during the highway? Uh, yeah, we can talk about it during the highway. That's a good idea. Let's talk about it during the highway. Um, okay, are there any other things to talk about? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the amended agenda. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, Zara moved and Vic seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So, welcome, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, to talk about our LHMP, otherwise known as the Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, which, as we can all be reminded, is super important for us to have an updated version so that we get as much reimbursement as we can in FEMA emergencies. Right, guys? Yes. Okay. So, if you guys want to just introduce yourselves for the record and take it away. Okay. Uh, I'm Keith Kevin. Emergency Management Planner, uh, CDRPC. With me is Will Pitkin. Uh, Will was the lead on uh, drafting this uh, your town LHMP. Uh, yeah, it's hot off the presses. We just wrapped it up today, uh, except except for the maps. The maps will be tomorrow morning. Uh, we will then share that out with the town uh, tomorrow, uh, so that we can post a digital copy to the website to begin the public comment period. We are going to also submit the draft plan tomorrow to DEM, which will increase the uh, town emergency relief and assistance funding score, the ERAP score. Uh, that'll take it back to the 17.5% reimbursement for the town. Uh, we've already coordinated this with DEM, so they're aware of, it, uh, of our process. Uh, they agree with it. and. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get that in tomorrow. That will immediately pick that back up uh, by the deadline of Thursday, which is the cutoff for uh, ERAP for the summer's uh, flooding. So we're getting in just before the uh, deadline. Uh, we worked pretty hard on this the last, especially the last couple weeks, trying to really get that draft copy finished. Uh, once this goes in and DM uh, reviews it, we'll come back and meet with the uh, planning team we've worked with already for any edits that DM requires, and then we'll turn back around, resubmit, that'll go to FEMA at that point, uh, and then FEMA will have to approve that. Um, we may go uh, come back at that when we do the uh, that first round of edits from DM and actually ask for the select board to adopt. Uh, we have what we call it, it's a preliminary adoption. That, uh, once you agree to that, we don't have to come back to you for another vote uh, while working through that editing process, as long as it's nothing that's a major edit to the point. Uh, uh, we're now in, uh, the legislature had actually passed about two years ago a uh, statute that allows us to, to handle them in that way. So that way we don't have to bother you continuously of re-adopting because we've made a few edits to it uh, that FEMA required. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, or uh, please look over the plan if you have any comments. We're still accepting comments uh, for that plan. Uh, the one you, you would, the copy you currently have in front of you is Friday's copy. <laughs> so it was primarily done. There's been some more work done on that. Uh, and Zara, or not Zara, but uh, Sarah, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting the names. <laughs> Sarah has that latest copy. We just sent it out from the office just before coming over. Uh, so were there any major changes that you would want to highlight for us? Uh, no, I mean, the main change uh, in this plan, you know, obviously was flooding again yeah. and landslides. Landslide, in the yeah. previous plan, it, it, uh, dam failure had been, had ranked really high. Uh, we included dam failure in the flooding section, but uh, overall it's just, you know, with, with the fever that previous two years, uh, just normal inundation and fluvial erosion flooding has obviously risen a lot higher within the region than uh, uh, the threat of dam failure. Um, most of our towns don't have much role actually in, in, in with the dams anyways outside of uh, just evacuation planning uh, and being part of any emergency action plan uh, meetings that the uh, dam owners actually have. So we don't really have much role we can do you know, to push the uh, dam owners to implement. Yes. Um, 
Can you say da dams, uh, obviously, any earthen dam uh, that uh, even related to like a pond or private ponds or? No, uh, we do include those. It, you know, there's a, uh, there's, is it a two or three? There are three dams in Middlesex. Um, and then we list, uh, also talked about Marshfield 6. Um, and, and Wrightsville. Any of the upstream yeah. dams as okay. well. Uh, FEMA requires any upstream dam that's a high hazard dam. Mm -hmm. So that means there's a potential for loss of life has to be included in your LHMP. Okay. But how about private? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, we, there was three pri or two private dams in the town that's two listed in the, in the Vermont Dam Index. Do you know where they are? Yes. Uh, one is, um, it's off Brook Road. Um, it'd be on the left. Um, I don't, it was on a, kind of in the middle of a big privately owned parcel. I don't remember the names uh, of the owners. Um, it's pretty far away from the road. Um, yeah, I know. I, I know, you know yeah, um, Middlesex number three. Not yeah. a very helpful name, but that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there was, uh, the Green Mountain Power one that I'm blanking on the name, Middlesex number two, um, and there, and then that, that uh, basically because that's kind of the downstream end of town, that would not, if that did fail, it would mostly be an issue for downstream neighbors, most Middlesex, then Wrightsville and Marshfield number six are the, um, well, Wrightsville's in Middlesex, but then Marshfield number six is the one that really, if that did fail, have a big uh, impact on Middlesex, um, and then so that, you know, for all, all the reasons yeah. he said, basically it's like, you know, other than getting the alerts out, uh, which you folks have been kind of ramping up the uh, alert system, and then um, and then also Green Mountain Power has done some upgrades um, since 2018, the lo last local housing mitigation plan. Um, so there's the there's a list of some of the things they've done um, since then um, in this draft plan. Um, and there's actually, for Marshfield number six, there is a upcoming uh, exercise for their emergency action plan uh, that I believe the town has been invited to as well. Uh, you mean for an emergency yeah, planning or something? Oh, it's for an actual exercise, yeah. so going through what, basically exactly. role playing out, what would you do in this scenario? In the uh, um, so I thought that uh, on the updating of road erosion and colder inventories, that that was being uh, tasked by us now. Is that not true? You guys are still no, doing that? No, we still do that. Oh, okay. CBRBC still does that. For oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we do, I generally try to do it every five years. Yeah. Uh, your last one was done two years ago. Uh, so but you're, you are doing that? Okay. Yes. Yeah, we have uh, TPI funding. There. Okay. And was there anything in, in these um, action statuses that changed to us that you used to do on for, uh, for this year or not? No, I okay. don't think so. Any other questions, guys? I mean, so we're not doing anything tonight. We're just... No, yeah, we just yeah. wanted to present uh, to start that public comment period. Yeah. And to uh, basically notify you of what the process is going to look like. Okay. Forward. I have a question. Yes. So, does the, is it 17.5% or 7.5%? 17.5% is what? The state will give us. Is right. what you're yeah, going to get from the state. Oh, 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 so the yeah, one you have to pay is yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you'll be down to only a 7.5% share that the town would pay for those damages. So, I'm sorry, can you say that number again? Okay, so FEMA covers 75% right. of the damages from a disaster. Because right. uh, last year the state stepped in and paid the rest of it. Yeah, right. That, obviously, uh, the state's not going to do that again this year. They don't have money. <laughs> uh, so under the ERAF program, if, as long as you have the 2019 uh, road and bridge standards, a current LEMP, which is done yearly, local emergency management plan, yep. uh, a LHMP, which as long as you have the interim status, which means you have it at VM for review, they count that. Uh, oh, geez. There's, there's river, a zoning, river. right? And a river, uh, no. River. River corridor is an additional one. Okay. Uh, bridge and road standards. Yeah. Uh, okay, and there's a fourth piece there that I'm not thinking <laughs> yeah. of, but you have it. <laughs> uh, that gets you an additional, uh, uh, that takes it from the state kicks in 7.5% for any community. If you do those four steps, 
they give you an additional 5%, and then if you have the river corridor or a part of the uh, NFIP community rating system, you can That's get an additional 5%. So, so we have all of them that gives yeah, us you have, a you have everything you could get. So your, the town share for the damages from this summer's event will be 7.5%. Which is not a small amount of money. But no. I, don't, I don't understand how we get to 7.5%. Because 17 plus 7.5 is 25. 17.5 plus 7.5. And that's the 25% that we are responsible for, meaning we, the state, and the town. Yes. So 7.5% of $4 million, or however much it's going to be, is not a small amount of money. What? I, no, I can't do the math in my head. I could do 10%, but yes. Does that also, of that 7.5% then also apply to like the hazard mitigation grants that we filled out through FEMA? Yeah. No, because it's the, yeah, not the state. Just okay. You're you know, working through the PA of any projects, your public assistance side. Okay. It's the so that's going to be something that we have to budget when we do budgeting season. We have to budget this. Now, hmm? 300,000. Yeah. 300,000. Yeah. And so in the past, Sarah, you may have a recollection of this, like during, I think, some of the bigger ones, like Irene or something, we, the, the state put out a bond for people to, to like, over time pay that 300 so that they didn't have to pay it, like, in one lump sum. Because that's, that's going to be hard for any town. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We also so just talked at the budget committee based on Keith's recommendation that we do need to have to have a little cushy kitty that we're for this kind of thing. For that, yeah, to cover the 7.5%, right. to cover the 25% if we do get any of the grants that I'm, you know. I think the state's going to be helping us figure that out. Yeah, the Vermont Bond Bank definitely has programs to yeah. assist, you know, and uh, with other communities in the region that we've already had conversations with them. But you still recommend that the budget? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> it, it is you know to get you an emergency fund. If you don't have the money yes. currently, because we have some of these having been you know we're just like you all that were damaged very badly last right. year and don't have any money left. Right. You know, uh, and the new damages they received this year. And we still have only got what five hundred thousand from FEMA. For the four million that we yeah. paid out, yeah, exactly. well, we haven't paid out four million yet, but we paid out two million. Okay. Yes, Randy. Can you clarify something? I, I, so I've received, I've heard conflicting information around the pickup of the twenty-five percent that FEMA traditionally has for the twenty-three flood. Yes. Um, and most people that I talk to, you know, it's odd. They're just there's no match for the town, right? But I've also heard that there was a cutoff period where that where they where they were going to fund 100 percent, or the state was going to step in and, and cover that was only to a certain date. Yes. And that the town is on the hook for costs incurred after that date. Is that? Can you clarify what that like that whole timeline piece? Actually, I, I can't, but I can try to get you an answer. I, I don't have an answer. Are you I, referring to the I, interest? I, I can get you an answer tomorrow when we meet with their, from FEMA. So Yeah, I mean, so there's some confusion around the fact that, okay, so say we've got $4 million worth of cost for the 23 flood. Yes. Uh, the communications that have been out there and that much of this body has been, you know, receiving is that the town's not going to be on the hook for any part of the match that FEMA would traditionally require. But there's also other information out there that said that there was like a, I forget what it was, a 30 or 60 day period where the state stepped in and said, okay, we're going to cover all of that match for this time period. But there are costs outside of that that we would be on the hook for. And that's what I'm looking for clarification. I thought it was related to the interest. So we. The interest we, is a whole other piece of that. No, Separate. I know, but that the interest was like we had gotten the information that FEMA was going to cover the interest charges of the loans that we had to take out to pay our workers before we got reimbursed by FEMA. 
but that that was limited to when the the um, damage was done or something like that. So it was like it wouldn't have you know we're we have our trucks out there for a year working on the problem, right? And so I think there was something like we're going to cover the interest for the work that was done for two months or something like that. So it didn't, they weren't really going to cover the entire interest. There was a couple month limit on it. So I'm wondering if that's. Yeah, so I'm particularly about the interest. I'm there. particularly interested in the match, not the interest piece. Yeah. They're two, two separate the conversations, really. So I think the match is, is more about where my confusion lies okay. because of the conflicting information that I've, I've heard. Where have you heard it? Just through the... Well, the governor had some stuff on CAX um, uh, talking about some stuff like that for a little, little while. Um, I mean, we had talked to Dirk about time periods and things like that, and normally FEMA does say up to 30 days or up to 60 days, but it seemed to me when we asked Dirk this question that they understood that this was not people were going to come in and fix it in 60 days. That this was because this was a long-term thing and because we have weather, you know, we have winter that we can't do any work and that sort of thing that, um, work that FEMA understood that in, and that we have to do RFQs according to FEMA, which we need to start sending out some for 2024 work. Um, that, 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 that wasn't a concern in terms of what we're doing here. And I know that Dorinda and I were both talking about that payback too and whether it was covering A work, B work, C work, that 90, oh, right. 90, 10, right, Dorinda? Yeah. Um, so she believes that the A work and B work is 100% and that the C work is only 90%. So there's a lot of confusion, Randy. And the fact is, Dirk's told us that he can reject anything. They can reject anything. So we could be doing all this work and they could come back and say, we just don't feel like paying you. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, so in the interest of Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission's time, um, are there any other questions about this? So um, could, could you repeat again the date that you're hoping that we will do this um, sort of signature that is? It would be after, we don't have a date yet. Okay. It would be after we get the, uh, uh, the copy back from VM once okay. they review it. Okay. So once they review it, we incorporate whatever edits they require. Okay. And then we'll come back to you, uh, and we'll okay. meet with your planning team first, and then we'll, okay. you know, most likely come back to the select board at that point for okay. an actual preliminary. Office. But we're on the hook. I mean, we we, we, we are okay with the LHM. We're we're okay with this for this FEMA yes. disaster. Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay. Great. Uh, <laughs> for this particular disaster. <laughs> thank okay, you. Great. Uh, thank you. Work. I know it's yeah. we really appreciate it because I know you've gone above and beyond what you would normally have to do to make sure that we are um, our our butts are covered. So thank you, Will, for all your work on this. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Keith. And um, yeah, we did the math very quickly after the disaster. Obviously, and you were like, we need to expect this. We weren't expecting this darn disaster. <laughs> Who would have thought? All right, great. Okay, any other questions for these guys? All right, thanks. No. Um, we oh, do have yeah. one quick update that it doesn't oh, have yeah. to do with this from, from one of our other staffers about the uh, emergency water oh. program. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, so Brian, who we may have met, Brian Boyd, uh, has met with the NRCS, National Resource Service Conservation Service. They, they toured uh, the town yesterday. Oh, okay. For the uh, 16 for, sites. For the EWP? Yes. Okay, for, yeah, for year two. Year. Yes, yeah, from okay. This and uh, likely, the estimate is about half of them uh, will qualify for funding, um, which is higher than um, you know, the usual rate for EWP. Uh, and the next steps will be um, NRCS, whatever that stands for, will issue damage survey reports in early October, estimated. Um, and then CBRPC will uh, update you folks at um, the first select board meeting in October after that. Um, then also just a, a word on when we'll, like we really can't give you a great estimate of when VM will yeah. get back to us because they 
you're not the only town who basically yeah. had to rush in <laughs> before the deadline. So they've been moving really fast, but also, you know, they're just okay. there to have a giant pile of paperwork that they're going to have to And there will be a 25% match. For yes, there is a, or a, a, on the EWP this time, there is yeah. a 25%. Just to clarify, this is the 2024. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 2024. Okay. Yeah, so they should have those reports sometime in early October. And okay. as you mentioned, uh, usually they're only about 30% of the uh, locations they actually visit oh, but we did qualify 50. for EWP. And this, they said they're expecting at least eight, maybe nine wow. of them to actually have qualified. Okay. And there were 14, is that what you said? Uh, 16. 16. 16. Okay, we'll announce the 50% the who are getting so 16, so you originally had 32? No, 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 no. 16, it's originally they 16. visited uh, eight. They, they okay, so eight out of the 16. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, and early October, we'll find out who those people are. Yeah, Brian said he'll actually come to the select board meeting. That comes oh, Brian will come. Board, okay, so. great. And then actually, while you're still here, um, do you want to just give us a little quick update about SID and how SID will be helping us? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, VM has actually changed how they're handling the local emergency management plans uh, for this next calendar year. Uh, Sid Pollock, who is the regional coordinator for our, our region, uh, he will be the one actually handling the LEM piece. So as you draft a new one, that will actually go directly to DEM. Previously, those went to the RPC. We reviewed those. And then, uh, uh, and if you need any assistance on that, uh, on crafting it, your LEMP or updating it, uh, Sid will be the actual contact person. Uh, very knowledgeable individual. I've worked with him quite often, but uh, the state is actually bringing that, the uh, local emergency management plans in-house and having their staff do all the work on those. Uh, they're expanding the number of regional coordinators. Uh, they're going to double the number. Uh, so we're going from three to six across the state. And uh, so they'll be able to shrink their footprint and be able to do a little more directly. Right. So he'll be able to, like, Sid will be able to come and do some trainings with us for emergency management. and. I just attended the, um, the two-day conference that was really great from the state, the Vermont Emergency Management. And um, there's just a lot more we could be doing to just be better communicative, I think, is really where it lies. I mean, like, we're great at fixing things and stuff, but just communicating with the, um, with the, with the townspeople and um, ensuring that townspeople are safe, those are the things that I'd like to work on. And SIT is, you know, has some great resources to kind of help us get better, um, just have better overall planning for, um, on the community end of things. Um, so, um, okay, that's great. Any other questions for Central Vermont, or do you guys have any other fun and exciting updates for the town of Middlesex? No? Okay. Great. Thanks so much, you guys. Good to see you. Enjoy the sun and the warmth out there while we have it. Okay, um, so we are on to um, the 520 highway report and FEMA update. Discussion of the 2024 Hurricane Barrel Emergency Declaration and how to proceed with 2024 emergency repairs um, with a possible update on East Hill Road culvert issues and any other road related manner that comes before the board action possible. And then we may move into an executive session, so we'll ask the people who are not a part of the select board to, um, but we'll invite you, Cheryl, to come. I think it would be helpful. And I'm not sure if Dorinda would be helpful too, but you're probably invited too, Dorinda. Okay, so let's talk about the FEMA update. Is that you, Zara? Sure. Um, <laughs> my, my skills of filling in spreadsheets, uh, the boys are having a hard time keeping up with. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dirk, we've just got the last of the information for Government Hill, Culver, and Shady Rill so that Dirk can send it to D.C. Um, with this last bit of information, Cheryl was able to find um, some invoices. That's going to be 721500 For 2024? This is 2023. 2023. Okay. Seawork. For those Seawork. three rows. So I've done... So, Sarah, what's that number again? 721 what? Yep, it was like 720, I'm guessing. It's 721,527 dollars and 78 cents. Government Hill, Shady Rill, and Culver. 
Um, so right now, Dirk is working on, FEMA is going through Wood Road, Mesa Road, and Baldock Road, which I believe are complete, but then Dirk comes with questions. Um, and then I've also completed, well, I've also started working on Zedon, Upper Bar Barrett, Barnett. Barnett. Upper Barnett, Nellie Chase, Davey, Upper Sunnybrook, South Bear Swamp, and Norton. So Steve's working on some questions that I gave to him um, and organizing some roads and we're meeting with FEMA again at 10 tomorrow. Tonight. What? Tonight. Yep. Yes. Not I don't, Thursday? I don't know if you need to be there. Uh, sorry, Thursday. 10 Thursday. Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay that's why I was Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and um, so we did get the public assistance for 2024, so obviously we knew that we might, so we've been good about keeping the paperwork in order and separated for 2024 mm -hmm. and requesting from the um, workers that they do things organi organized and by identified by road. Yeah. Does that seem to be going okay? Um, well, I mean, well, I mean, like for, for are the, um, are the dirt tech people, are they presenting things? They are aware. They did send over um, a sheet that was dividing the roads out, but it had no dollar amounts. It only had the material broken down by road. So Steve, as of this morning, is going to go back to them and say to them, but he needs more detail than that. Okay. For the 2024? For the 2024. Okay. Um, okay. So, so then there'll be three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of 20, so that's another seven rows that will need to be done, but I don't have from Dirk the go-ahead spreadsheets. And that's 2023, see work. So in terms of um, the private roads that, or driveways that still have some issues that you know haven't been repaired properly, maybe they probably need larger culvert, so last year when we had the 2023 flood, um, I'll just give myself as an example. You know, we repaired our own driveway, but we kind of did it haphazardly, right? And the town then came in so that we could get across, came in like a month later, replaced it with a larger culvert because they were doing all that work on Culver Hill Road. And they just knew you have to have a larger culvert, right? And this water, you know, put in all that ditching and stonework, and they did that for, you know, the driveways as you went down. And we got reimbursed from FEMA for those. Um, so is this what we're talking about? Like, for 2024, yes, is this think, what people are need, asking? I think we need clarification on how we're handling it this time around. Right. And but why did really we do it that way? We did it because it was we knew that that it had to be that way for the water to flow. If you're going to well, do this, we I think that, I think if you look back at the minutes, it's we said in order for us to control how they're put back together, yeah, we should have we should contract out through ourselves to do that. And is that correct? I'm just going to yeah. give you the minutes for that meeting. Well, sure, I'll read the minutes. I think there was something to yeah. that effect. Right, because we knew that it was going to be a disservice to all the other work if the driveways weren't done properly. Because you you needed the water to flow properly through the culvert in order to get to all the nice yes. ditching and stonework. So you probably looked at each culvert and you said, oh, this one needs to change or this one's okay or whatever. Okay. And, and I think it was that's done how to it ones happened. That, I think it was done to ones that were damaged. Yeah. I don't think we went to every driveway. I don't think you did either. No, it was the ones that were damaged. Right. Yes. And based that. on the minutes from when you guys, after the 2023 flood, had said the town is going to be responsible for fixing the culverts, we did give that to Dirk for 2024 and said to him, this still stands. Yes, Vic. Yeah, I have a little problem or issue understanding this a uh, little bit because uh, when you say the town, who are you talking about? Are you talking about Eric and his crew or are you talking well, about? Well, last year we contracted out 
contractors. Right. Do the work. My point is, and this is my opinion, and I'm pretty. A lot of those culverts were not put in correctly. They were put in too shallow. They had too Some much. Of them were, yeah. Too much. Too much stone. The one up by Susan uh, Clark's mm -hmm. definitely, mm -hmm. definitely put in too. So there's no way that we can come back on the contractor, uh, which was Hutchins, mm -hmm. to fix that. But don't you think that somebody ought to be making sure that they put them in correctly? I don't not know. Is that your job or if that's Steve's job or we got to hire somebody? Is, it, is that what? Is that part of it? What you need clarified from the board? I think board? so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's not something that we do. If we have a, you know somebody filling out a culvert, like we don't go and say yes, you did that right or no, you did that wrong. We, with yeah. access permits. Yes. Yes. Access. When they are complete, we are supposed to go back and check them. When they are complete, I right? haven't had too many that actually have been completed yet. Okay. But, but that's not what we're saying. Right. But so what? What happened in this case? She just went and replaced it. No. This was. This was. These were culverts that were damaged last year during the, the severe flooding. Uh huh. And they were repaired by a contractor, and lo and behold, I think they were not properly. They were not deep enough. Yeah. Okay. Randy? I'm remembering having conversations about the fact that they could submit the cost to do so, and if we could get it covered by FEMA, that we would be the facilitator of that. But we weren't, it wasn't a conversation saying that we were taking on, at that point in time, all culverts uh, and the maintenance of uh, well, think, private residence culverts. I think it, I think it was just based on damage ones from the floor. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's that was that was it. Yeah. So it was a you know it was a an individual case of that storm, and saying we're already dealing with FEMA. Um, if we can help facilitate this, we will. But to your point, with your driveway, you know, uh, covering the cost of going and making it so you 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 had access to the roads wasn't part of the town's responsibility right because we um, yes because our rules are that we're responsible for our own culverts right but I, I can see I can see from a from a management standpoint you know uh, the thought that if we have control over those then we have to you know we can go clean them out we can go do whatever I don't think that changes though if they have the responsibility to to you know, keep those open and flowing. Um, I, I think maybe it's just, you know, we have the inspection of the culverts, and I think you already do something to that effect. Um, I just more frequent. I, I typically do not inspect driveway culverts just because they're not our responsibility. Sarah's having a question. Yeah, I hate what you're saying, Eric. What did you just say? As far as a rule of thumb, I don't typically go around checking driveway culverts because they're not our getting a little lost in this conversation. Well, so I think, I think, yes. I think the question on the table is, with this storm, are we repairing right-of-way accesses in our town right away, like we did in the 23 storm? Zara, we gave Dirk the same verbiage that you guys put together in 2023 to make that magic happen so FEMA would repay us for us doing that. We gave it to him for 2024. I would wait until Thursday and we can verify with Dirk again if there's you know, a list of driveways just to make sure that we haven't gone too long with the time and all that stuff. It, it's very important to resolve this issue because it's almost October. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and pretty soon we'll have snow piles on. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, you got culverts that are sticking right up in the air on driveways. Yeah. And the guy, the guy is saying, are you going to fix this, Eric? Or do I have to fix this? Mm -hmm. And he I, doesn't know. I, I, to be fair to you, you, I know, don't you need to know where. I have to know what I'm permissed I'm to do. Right. Sarah, right. do you have that thing that we, or? Do you have a copy of it, Sarah? You uh, it Sarah was it. just going to pull it out. Yeah. Eric was uh, had talking about last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, just make just note that for 2024 driveway culverts are a uh, individual assistance. The team is covered. 
Yeah, but we didn't find that out until yesterday, and it's a little too late. For, for I don't understand. They what? covered my driveway. I got reimbursed for the work I did on my driveway in 2023. Yes. So yeah. I can just tell you that Dirk told us that it is better if towns have a policy that driveway culverts are covered so that FEMA can just repay the town when they fix those. Right. But if driveway culverts aren't covered, last year they covered my culvert. That's oh, what that's they paid great. for. But then this is one of the things we met with individual assistance this week when I met with them twice. Both times they said, this is what's new okay. in 2024. All right, so maybe these culverts that are sticking up. Maybe I was a pilot program. What they, that, that person, person should, should do is that person should go down to the disaster recovery center in Waterbury by October 12th or something and see if they can get that repaired. But that doesn't help Eric today. I will read you the minutes from last year because I, my printer goes out of the, the appropriate paper. Um, Got something to say? So. I do. Do it. But let, okay, let, Sarah's going to read something oh, first. Uh, do you want me to print this out and just give it to you? Uh, Liz spoke to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns regarding the town's duty to repair junctions between private driveways and town roads. She noted the town's highway ordinance states the homeowner owns and is responsible for the culvert beneath the private driveway. In normal circumstances, that's true. However, because these culverts are in the town's right of way, she said it would be wise for the board to hire a contractor to repair the connections and have those bundled in the town's FEMA request. She said the argument is to prefer to have these culverts installed correctly, not just quote unquote willy nilly, thereby creating more problems in the future. Here we are. I resent this. Peter said the most pressing matter is to get people connected safely to town roads. However, the town will not be fixing private driveway damage unrelated to the culvert in the town's right of way. Yeah. Sandy asked about installing bigger culverts to handle increased water. Eric said the minimum was down 15 inches. Randy said Eric would have to hire multiple contractors. Vic said the only problem is someone has to manage multiple contractors. Randy said it wouldn't run through Vic and Eric and project management consultant. Anyway, James, I forget who that is, asked if there were specific specifications for culverts. The board said there was, there was and that the culverts must adhere to state specifications. Jim Cavino asked the town to check stumps caught in the culvert under East Hill Road. Motion, Vic moved that the town hired contractors to repair driveway connections and culverts within the town's rights, rights of way to allow for egress and ingress into town highways, noting they must adhere to the state of Vermont specifications. Randy seconded, the motion passed. So you voted for it too, so. I did, it passed, yay. Liz so that contractors would not be working on private roads or driveways that connect to the private roads. Okay, so, that was and we got reimbursed for that. Well, we're, or we're, uh, we're working on getting know. reimbursed for it. <laughs> we, right? we don't know yet. Right, okay. So, um, I still, so, so I would agree that I stand by that, but now with this, I guess, you're either paying the private landowner who has to go out and find someone who's going to install it potentially willy-nilly, right? Yeah. And not to our specifications. And not in time, probably because there's no contractors available. Right, and not in time. Or do we say, yes, people who have culverts who are just sticking out and really need to be addressed, that we will um, hire someone to do facilitate that. Facilitate the repairs for that. And what, yeah, facilitate the repairs. But okay, here's my other thing though. Doesn't this, this is not an emergency, is it? So like, are we supposed to do an RFP and everything for all this? Mm -hmm. Last year was emergency if, because- well, If the town doesn't I think, do it. I think yes. it's, isn't that required if it's like $250,000? Isn't there a dollar amount on that in our policy? No, I thought it was, I, I thought it was just, I thought fee work, emergency work, we could go ahead. But I think in our purchase policy, we have a dollar amount that we are required to get an RFP at yeah. if it's a certain amount of water. Is it's that correct? It's pretty high, yeah. It's like $15,000. It's, it? it's really low. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, uh, you can spend 15000 15, I thought that was our purchasing power. I'm, just, I'm, getting, I'm looking at the 2015 purchase policy, which was passed after FEMA audited us. Um, this, there, there are two levels. So uh, the, the $10,000 is that an, an, one employee cannot purchase anything over $10,000 by themselves. Yet all purchases of $25,000 or 
or more, and any supported by federal funds shall be subject to a bid process. Any. RFPs. Okay. Um, but in the emergency work, don't we just have to make three phone calls? Uh, we don't even have to do that in the emergency work. I don't think so. The, the bottom line is, you you don't have time to go fix those, even though there's a hand, only probably what? There's probably only a, a dozen, 15 in town, right? How many are there? You well, know, obviously, I don't have a number in my head of how many, uh, but I can't imagine there's a ton. Yeah. I mean, yes. I'm just asking. No, I'm just I'm thinking, of, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, Randy. I think it's extremely important to be very uh, explicit about what you're looking at here. Um, there are so many different scenarios that I can see uh, put into place that we are asking to be on the hook for. Uh, take my driveway, for example. Okay, it washed out, town needs to manage the roadway, uh, water. Um, if the town was to put a culvert in at my driveway, they're going to have to go uh, either blast out ledge, hammer out ledge, whatever the case may be. I, uh, it's not feasible. Uh, it's, it's, exactly. Well, um, and the water cuts off before it gets to your place and starts after the uh, driveway. Maybe. It didn't during <laughs> it the didn't. storm. No. Um, no, that culvert so, yeah. but, you know, that's one example. And, and I think that you know, this conversation is a pretty deep conversation if you're going to establish policy around this. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now we just need to focus on damaged entrances from this past storm. I, that are going to cause problems to the main road if they're not fixed. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the first one that pops in my head is right across from this house. What did you say, Eric? The first one that pops in my head is right across from Vic's house. Okay. I, personally don't think I would have an issue if we knew that we were guaranteed to get refunded mm -hmm. or get reimbursed, I should say, from FEMA. We don't know that. And then the second part of that is, you know, is the landowner responsible for the 25% match? You know, our, our current policy says that they own that culvert. They need to, they need to maintain it in a way that uh, manages the water properly. If all of a sudden we need to upsize uh, culverts, you know, I guess the question is, is the landowner responsible for that upsize? It's a pretty deep conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would this be very I'm, careful to say that yes. we are going to take those and we are going to go fix those. I don't think I support that. This is what I support right now, is that if it is, if we deem a certain driveway private driveway an emergency in that this really needs to be fixed because in the next rainstorm water is going to just wash out all that work we did on the main road right. then that's the decision oh come on be careful that's a decision that um, Eric makes right Eric can go around and look and he can say these three driveways right are going to cause havoc if we do not fix them on the main road, right? Because that's, that to me is, and it's not saying that everyone who has a driveway problem is going to get fixed. It's us deeming that it's important for the survival of the rest of the road. That's a different conversation. Right. Maybe. Absolutely. Yes. And so I, I'm okay with that, right? I'm okay with but I, I would agree with Randy. I don't think we're just going to go and say to everybody, yeah, we're going to fix your culverts and we're going to replace them with bigger ones. That we're going to do when we do our highway ordinance and we're going to decide whether or not we're taking over people's driveway culverts. So I think it really is about you looking at it and saying, is this in the best interest of the town and the future of this road and the area around it? And if so, then I would say, I think it's fine for you to replace that person's culvert. And people just have to understand. We're not going around and replacing everyone's culverts. Good luck with that. <laughs> they haven't called me. Nobody calls me. They're afraid of me, I guess. <laughs> Either that or what? Careful what you wish for. I can give you some phone calls. But give me again, some phone calls, yeah. I mean, this is 2024, new for 2024. Repair it, take votes, get your receipts, get your photos. Go yes. To the disaster. That's the perfect answer. That, and yes, that's that true. FEMA, as, they, as the, the individual assistance guys explained to me, before the 2023 flood, FEMA did 
not fully understand what driveways meant in Vermont. Okay. If emergency if emergency services. That makes the, sense. The yeah. buzzword is emergency services. If your driveway is so impacted that emergency services cannot get to your house, mm -hmm. yes, then you qualify. You will get reimbursed up to forty five hundred dollars or more. Forty five hundred yep. is the max. I didn't get that much. I got twelve hundred. But okay, so. Are we clear on that for now? Clear as mud? Just about as clear as mud. Clear as mud? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so it's Eric's well, discretion. It's at Eric's discretion so. in, and that it, it, okay. that it impacts the survival of the road. Yes. I, I, the, at the discretion of the town road foreman, but what are the repercussions to him, towards him on other people? And his decision making. Does that you make mean sense? For the people that are I'm mad really tired that they didn't. Yes. yes. That they didn't get it. Fixed. Yes, actually. Um, yes. That well, I mean, you know, I don't want to necessarily have Eric be explaining everything, but you know, he can say this well, decision was. It. Yeah, this decision was made in order to because fixing yours would not have any impact on the road, and you are responsible for it. Your culvert is your responsibility. Like that's in our road, our our road ordinance right now. For now, is it easy enough to just put a list of the ones that you feel are in that in that boat and give them back to the select board for us to say that we're doing that? Does that take the heat off? Oh, I don't. I mean, yeah. I, I, oh, he doesn't. No, I know what you're. Yeah, I, but I know I know what you're saying, <laughs> and the perception is, is you know, people we're not playing favorites, right? Yeah. So I mean, if if I mean, I could. kicking it to the select board for us to I say think, yes, we're going to approve these three. That's a good that idea condition. because there's a lot of people that fix theirs and can come back and say, well, you're going to pay for mine now. They already have, and we've said no. Okay, right. Yeah. So I think that's and my go to FEMA, idea. and FEMA's reimbursing them. Yeah. FEMA's reimbursing them. So and I, I would suggest. If you suggest, miss one, oops. <laughs> yeah. I would suggest that we have Eric put together that list. That's fine, and bring it to the next meeting. Yeah. Is that enough time for you? Yes. I mean, meaning is it? Yes. We're not running out of time. I will be okay. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, the update on the East Hill Road culvert issues. Um, so I reached out to Richard, and I thought I was making some progress. Um, and. I, I have to admit that I kind of dropped the ball after I stopped making progress. Um, have we done anything to the culvert? Okay, so um, I think, so, so where it was left was I had tried to say to him, let's, you know, can I bring someone more neutral, like Paul Sermonero who's on the road, he was like, no, because Paul and you are not engineers. He's very much wanting a hydraulic engineer to come. Yes, sir. Why do we have to prove ourselves? We don't. Him proving himself. And that's he the whole can point. Get an engineer. If he wants to prove yeah. something, then he can get the engineer. Right. What's so I'm not paying for an engineer to go. Yes. He wants an engineer to say that if that culvert's there, it is not going to damage his property. And an engineer will not say that. Right. Well, certain. I think he also wants an engineer to build something. He wants to build a, you know, the the stone, like a design that puts, you know how we said we would put stones there and so that the stones would mitigate it and silt, you know, the silt would get filtered out and all that. He doesn't want you guys to just do that. He wants an engineer to design it. And I didn't say no, and I didn't say yes, I just left it. I'm like, I'm not gonna go hire an engineer to do this, because everyone has already said, we have brought in our experts who happen to not be engineers, but happen to know how to do roads, and they've all said, yes, you can do this by putting stones here. And that's where we've left it, folks. And I think that um, he did, he did, um, show an interest in wanting to have stonework done. Um, did he say, Sarah, that he didn't try to stop us from? Yes, he denied that. He denied that he tried to stop us from he doing the work. He said he never put down a chair and tried to stop that. The culvert could be connected. Nobody had, a, had stakes there, so no digging, and he had ribbon on it. OK. Yeah, I think the chair he was denying. Because we had said, what is he going to do? 
put a chair there. Oh. <laughs> That's what was left in the minutes, yes. So the ribbon and the stakes are down. And, I saw that. And we've received these two letters, and it's my feeling that if he wants. Okay, what I'm. Um, um, okay, here, here, here. okay. Okay. So basically, these letters are stating sort of the history of the culvert, the cross culvert, <coughs> and how long they've been there. And um, that was good, based on their provision in the town that we couldn't we couldn't put a new culvert in and dump water on a property on somebody's property without their um, permission. Mm -hmm. Right. That was in but 1985. That's, a new that's right. not that's not even in there. Right, so this was back in the 70s that, that there's been a cross culvert there for as long as... Do you or Dirt Tech have any reservations about just going out and opening that in one no. right now? No, I just need to, uh, what I'm going to do though, is I will make an appointment with the sheriff's <coughs> office so they can sit there while they do it. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so I, I think that... That's the simplest way. I. I Dirt Tech told me they will do whatever we want yeah. them to do. So I feel, and I just want to get everyone's opinion. We don't have to let Richard know that we're doing this because this is our job, right? We can just do it, right? Um, or we can be courteous and say, Richard, this is just going to happen. We're going to do this. We're, we don't have to give him a date because the dates aren't made for this kind of thing. Um, and I can say to him, we're not hiring an engineer. If you want to hire an engineer, you can do that. Um, but if, you, if you're not going to hire an engineer, we will put some stones. We will dump some stones. No, not an if. What? No, if you're not going to, we will. We will. Okay. Regardless of what yeah, you we'll dump some stones, right? <laughs> but that is on his property. I don't think it's in our well, right of way. I think, I think we should only stay in our right of way mm -hmm. unless right. he gets permission mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Permission That's what I mean. Permission yeah. to do so. Yeah. I will not venture out of our right of way. That's what I mean. Permission. So dumping stones will be out of the right of way, and we are not doing that until we have his permission. Yes. Absolutely. Sorry. I just wanted to say that um, Richard has stopped us not once but twice already. Um, so in terms of giving him the heads up, I already had written to him a month ago and said that we are going to go forward and that's when this okay. kind of exploded. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I know I'm new to the select board, but I don't like the idea of any one citizen holding the town captive or involving themselves in the safety of the rest of, of you know, their neighbors. I don't. I just also feel like if you, like, I, I just want to be mindful of today's day and age and how people have rage mm -hmm. and to see a sheriff out there and work being done might get me agitated well i mean I the sheriff with rage sorry the sheriff is for eric's safety it's going to cost the town extra money, which it's he's already cost the town lots of money in the two times that Dirt Tech were there to do it and had to move out. So he's costing the town a lot of money. So at some point, are we going to charge Well, it's not necessarily just for me, but it's for them as well. Right. No, no, no. I, I know. I, I'm not against that. Yeah. I'm just whether or not we should communicate that. How, how does this play into this? You know, I've heard a couple of things. You did this, and you called this, and, uh -huh. and so... We got this, you know, at the beginning here uh, about the select board, and, and uh, number four is no single member of the body shall have the authority to represent or act 
on behalf of the body unless by majority vote. What you had, um, the body has delegated each authority for a specific matter and duty noticed meeting and such delegation is reported in the minutes. And I don't think we're doing this, and I think we should do this. And that's why I'm trying to get us to come to a consensus on what we're going to do. For Eric's sake, as well as our sake. You mean you don't want me talking alone with this man? Because I don't it's think not so. The consensus of the I don't think so. I don't think she, I don't think Zara should. Um, but it happens all the time, Vic. People are calling you Doesn't make all it the right. time. I know. I'm just saying, like, that just is by default what happens. People call the chair, people, and, and by the way, our lawyer recommended that he not communicate with anybody but Sarah and me, and not that, that we don't have multiple people communicating with this person. Well, exactly, and, and that's part of the problem because somebody will go on, you know, even with well, this driveway stuff, they'll go on and say, well, FEMA said this, or FEMA, or this is what we're going to do. I think it should come from this board. Well, I mean, I feel like it is. We talked that I was going to get in touch with him. We all can't get in touch with him at the same time. That becomes a warned meeting. So That's someone has to communicate. That's right, but it wasn't voted on. Well, I, we talked about it. We said Liz was going to go and reach out to him. No, you said I am going to do it, and that was it. Well, OK. So we vote on everything. I don't know that we have to vote on everything that Liz is going to go and talk to someone or Zara is going to go and do this. I mean, I don't know that that's realistic. Vic, it would make it be where if someone called you, you would have to say, I can't talk with you about this. We need to vote on this. And you yeah, used to not. say, didn't you used to say, when I, when I tried doing this before, and it's not me, you know, I'm not trying to be vindictive, but you said, come to a meeting. And I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, just so you know, Vic, I'm not mad right now because I'm, I guess I'm just slightly confused because I just feel like, you know, we're people in the community and people talk to us about things and they ask us questions and, you know, there are situations where you're going to be having conversations like you do and you do and you do, right, with people. Mm -hmm. Peter Hood, I mean, he's famous for it, right? Like, you're going to have conversations with people. And so I just don't see... Um, I mean, and I feel like I'm asking you all right now. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here asking you what to do with this person, right? And, and um, I mean, I know what you're saying, Dick, and, and, but I, I'm not making any unilateral decisions about this man, right? Can I make a motion yes. that we go forward with what we need to do on East Hill Road regarding the cross culvert to Richard Cowell's property? only going in our right of way and doing the work that we had planned to do originally. And authorize Eric to do that work with the, with with the, the presence of a, of a uh, some sort of constable. So sure. motioned. Okay. I need that motion. <laughs> <laughs> you need what? Tight, faster, <laughs> It's all over the place. That we would authorize Eric to move forward with the corrective actions needed for the culvert at this location. What did you say corrective actions? Opening up Completed. the inlet. Completing. Does that mean connecting the culvert? Yes. Okay. So Eric, should, the motion is to authorize Eric to connect the culvert as planned mm -hmm. with the presence of law enforcement. Yes. Correct. That's the motion. OK, is there a second? A second, yeah. Any further discussion? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Just before we vote, is is there a preference as to whether or not we've had dirt tech scheduled to do this? Is there a preference from a road foreman to have dirt tech do this underneath the yeah. guidance that we had before, or have your you and your crew do this? I would have them do it. Right. The machine is still on the road, or FEMA, so and they get paid for it. And they get paid for it. It's contracted. You would you would do it, Eric? No. Dirt Tech will finish the job. Okay. They're getting paid for it. Okay. Yeah. So after, we prefer Dirt Tech. Okay. Good question. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. I will call them tomorrow. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess I won't do anything. Correct. Um, all righty. Um, 
We have the executive session. I'm wondering, if, okay, who wants to lead? Because we have the fire department here. Uh, meaning, like, I would like you to be here, Cheryl. Do you mind staying if we mm -hmm. move? Um, mm -hmm. If we move the, um, if we do fire department first and then do the executive session, does that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the monthly meeting, I feel like we just saw you. <laughs> Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I honestly feel like, didn't yeah. you just come and give us a report? That's because the last one was so stirring. Uh, I know it was. So, it was. So we're up to 79, and we're still marching towards 100 for this year. But we're down to six for this period versus 14 last. Uh, we had one mutual aid out to Berlin and one in. It was in because the fire location was undetermined when a passerby on the interstate called it in. So Montpelier was called out as well as us and ended up being the So it's kind of a mutual aid, kind of not. Uh, Max uh, was seven, men was three, but we're still at five per call. So that didn't change from last month. Engine one out four times, six, zero, tanker one, two times, rescue one, three times, truck 14, zero, and POV. Excuse me, one time. So we had um, Route 2 in center, it was a two car accident, went and ended up being a minor fender bender. Mortown K1 happened to be going by, he's their chief, uh, and canceled our response because there wasn't any uh, problems that we need to take care of. Nap Road had a trash fire, um, that was a POV response because they had to go right by it and it was put out with a five gallon bucket of water that was there. Uh, North Bear Swamp was a fire alarm act activation. Uh, it was canceled shortly after. They called up and said it was food burn. So uh, we had four responders for that one. So the Berlin one was a structure fire on Cedar Drive. We sent engine one, rescue one, to six responders. Uh, Crosstown was the, <coughs> the one that up here uh, came to as well. It was an unmonitored uh, burn pile. There was a permit. It was for the Saturday prior and during the week, but the person that had lit it wasn't around, so we extinguished it. Um, and then the last one for this report was a car fire on the interstate, and they are going to pass it by, hit it with an extinguisher, had it knocked out by the time we got there, but um, our engine checked it out, and we didn't have to respond. The other vehicle started going out, but we canceled it. Um, the two for today will be on next month's uh, report. Fast squad was busy, uh, 16 total calls, 15 of those were medical only calls. For training, we did driver training since we're getting new people, we're getting them to learn how to drive big trucks. Every, every child's dream. Um, we had to get a new water tank gauge for engine one. Driving big trucks. Okay. Believe me, I know my kids like it. Um, and purchases, we're buying new vests. Um, they're vests that go over our gear. We're keeping some on the trucks in case somebody's responding that doesn't have it, but the new members need uh, vests as well. And yes, they are a little pricey. They're coming out of our budget, but just wanted to know what the, the deal was. Firefighter 1 has started, so the five folks that signed up are going to that, which is great. Um, so we're busy. Just a quick question. Um, do some people's fire alarms alert the fire station? Not the fire station. They'll go to, say you have ADT or some other alarm company. The alarm activates. They call the dispatch center, which is up normally in Williston. Williston calls Montpelier. Montpelier calls us. So there's a time lag in there. I see. So that's what happened on North Bear Swamp. There was some like, Somebody electronic was cooking thing. And, and their and smoke happened. detector is probably too close to the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, which tends to happen, and yeah. set it off when they realize it. And thankfully, they called in right away and said, nope, it's just food, it's not a problem, you can cancel. Great. Any questions? Oh, I do have a question about, and I did, I just want to clarify um, too, um, I, I texted um, Eric yesterday about this. Um, so I'm in the, um, the throes of, um, we are now allowed to apply for the MRF grant at the 11th hour. They're like, you can apply again. And I'm like, okay. Um, so um, the I am including the uh, fire station heating system oh. recommendation. And um, 
I, I need to give a little narrative about the existing one. And he said, as of right now, it works. The service guy said it's at the end of its life cycle, but the coils are pretty corroded and is having issues more frequently. Any other things you want to add, or is that basically it? That's, uh, uh, well, he said, I don't know if you said not to put more money into it. Not to put more money into it. Okay. Was okay. there something with parts not being available for that? That's this one. That's this one. Okay. Yeah, like you still get parts for us, the pricing. Okay. And we don't have a lot of parts in ours because it's, okay. it's an on-demand system. Okay. I think um, I think there was only one recommendation for that um, for your report. At any rate, there's I don't have a lot of hope, but we will know. The good news is we will know October twenty-first. So. That's on the agenda for later. Um, okay, so um, anything else for the Middlesex Fire Department? Thank you for your service as usual. Thank you to, um, oh, and I will just say that um, I did email um, Jeff to let him know that how um, appreciative my neighbors were of Scott and how nice Scott was who came to do the, um, the gutter spray out. So like they hired him, or they hired the fire department to do the spray. Culvert clean out? The culvert clean out. I think we've done seven of those. Okay, good. Cool. So if you are watching this and you want to support the Middlesex Fire Department, you can pay, what is it, like $150 or something like that, to have your culvert, especially if it's really jammed with all the dirt and soil and you can't get it yourself, they will take their big hoses and they will spray it right out. It needs to be cleaned at the both ends. At both ends, okay. To. Cleaned at both ends, but they will let you know. So call, get on your phone right now and call 1-800-CLEAN-YOUR-CULVERTS. <laughs> I just entered into an infomercial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take long. <laughs> Um, anyway, they said how nice Scott was, so I'm really pleased that we have Scott on our, on our, and I'm sure all the other ones are nice too. So, all right, thank you guys. Um, so we are going to move into executive session now. Um, uh, what are we going to vote on? Executive session. When does I forget about this, Sarah. Okay, so we're going to. Um, is there a motion to move into executive session under one BSA statute three one three A one B to discuss labor relations with the town of White? No action. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Sarah moves. Is there a second? I'll second it. Vic seconds. All those in favor of moving into executive session? Oh, but with a caveat: who can attend? Correct. I would say, Cheryl, you can. Um, I think Eric can. I don't know what it's about, so okay. sure, yeah. <laughs> um, I think Sarah can, and Dorinda I think um, I also think that Zara can. Dorinda. Not Zara. Dorinda. Dorinda. <laughs> Why is everyone Zara today? I don't know. She just so <laughs> if you don't mind turning up your video and Hi, you guys. So you guys. Okay, so we just came Wait. out of a okay. session. Okay. And um, is there a motion? Yeah. Well, before you make the motion, I just want to tell you that according to your minutes from August 16th, um, um, Steve was only going to work until January 10th, 2020. January 10th, 2024? Well, he's past that. He's long past that. I'm just telling you. Okay. So, is there a motion, or should I make the motion? You could do it. Okay, I'll make a motion that um, we um, thank and appreciate Steve Martin for the work that he did on the 2023 floods as the FEMA administrator, um, and that we end his duties um, effective uh, after he gets a chance to, you know, wrap up whatever things he needs to wrap up. Um, and um, we uh, and that um, Vic will call him and let him know that we um, thank him and that we um, will not need his services for 2023 20, anymore. For for so FEMA administration. For 2020. For 2023 flood. Four. Yeah. Four. Uh, and for 2024 flood. 
so we're, we're done with 2023 um, for his work working on 2023 and we won't need him for 2024 okay is there a second question yes we're we setting a time frame for that uh, wrap-up um, I would say give him a few days to wrap up two days October 1st yeah sure October 1st okay, that'd yeah. Be better. Yeah, October 1st. Um, is there a second? So I made that motion. Is there a second? Randy seconds it. All those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstain? Zara's abstaining. Okay. Um, All righty. So, Sarah, you had said you had something else. And Vicki will give him a call to that effect, right? No, that was the only thing I wanted to tell you, was I read the minutes from August 16, okay. 2023. Okay. He was supposed to serve until January 10th. Okay. Good to know. I don't um, know if I'd be able to do it right at the first thing. That's time. fine. Okay. So we have moved on to Treasurer's Report, discussion of interest rate on the new line of credit to pay for road repairs. Action possible. No action possible. But okay. Um, we're, we have to extend our loan. Okay. And it's the new interest rate go, well, it goes from 3.99 to 5.48%. Um, the payment date is going to change from September 19th, 2024 to February 17th, 2025. And the interest rate went up? Yep. One and a half. That's a lot. I don't remember interest rates being so low back then. And Malia? The girl at yeah. Community Bank did everything she could to try to, try to get it down, okay. and that that was where they locked in. What was it? 5.48 percent. Was there um, any more talk of the bond bank um, releasing any more funds for? They have talked about it for the 2024 back. stuff, but okay. they have to have a handle on exactly where we're at for the 2024 okay. stuff. How much do we still owe them? Everything? Have we paid them back anything? We have not paid. Oh no, we paid them back. We paid the bond back. Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand plus their interest of five thousand forty-eight dollars or something like that. Okay. How much did we borrow from the bond bank? Nine hundred and fifty-eight thousand. Oh, well, what we did was we borrowed everything we got allocated and then paid down the loan oh, right. at the bank. Yep, yep, yep. That's right. Um, okay. So. Um, so no action. We're just you're just telling us that the yeah, interest rate. Okay. Well, thank you for doing that and making sure that we have money to pay our creditors. And this is our school payment. This is the preliminary education, and this is four million one hundred thirty-seven thousand seven hundred sixty-one dollars and forty-one cents. So for every time we get a payment, it'll be close to a million dollars or something. For the school. For the school. Yeah. This is preliminary, though. They have no. not given us a bill yet. But that was up from like 890 or something like that? Yeah. Well, we're collecting that with all the taxes. Okay. Are we? Well, yes, because then you have to deal with anyone who's doing buyouts. Does that include people in our buyouts? Because that's going to be a problem. We haven't, we, don't, we haven't had any buyouts. They're still liable for their taxes as of right now. Less, except for abatement. Except for abatement. Okay. Right, but once those buyouts happen, yeah. we've we've calculated those taxes in Yeah, this. but that's not gonna happen in this fiscal year. Those buyouts are not gonna happen. Oh, they're not gonna happen in this fiscal year? Well I wonder is that is that even a calculation we can make, you guys? Can we say like No. Not until they come back. Not until they come back. Right. Or nine that qualified in the sixteen. Right. But that's not a buyout. That's those are EWP. That's the uh, emergency watershed. Um, okay. Anything else from the treasurer? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so reviewing RFP for IT services and sending out RFP for IT work. Action possible. Um, I just gave you guys the uh, IT drafts. So I. My advice is to hold off on the website until we get an IT person to maybe chime in and say, oh, we can do the website as well, because the website proposals are crazy. What is it? Okay. It's right here. Oh, request for proposals. Uh, yours was blowing around. Oh, I wonder okay. if this you is yours. Yours? Well, I don't know. I didn't get one. Oh, yes, you did. Well, maybe I forgot to hand it out to you, sorry. Oh, I, I have it, yeah, so that's yours. Okay, so you, Sarah, uh, Liz had and, and I And I wrote yeah. that question yeah. to Sarah. I think Vic has one, too. Yeah. And I also emailed it to you. There it is. Thank you very much.
Okay, so yeah, I'm getting confused. IT services is RB Technologies. Yes. Website is a website. Mm -hmm. Right, but okay. there are some IT services that also provide website assistance. So I think before, before putting the cart before the horse, we better get the horse. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So our, so your request is that um, we are... Just sign off on it. We're signing this, that this is a good RFP. Yeah. Who, who yeah. created yeah. this? I did. Okay. But I ripped it off another town. That's fine. <laughs> Fired it. <laughs> okay. And by the way, just for the, your own edification, there's never, we should not have entered into any type of contract with, with uh, RB technology for that amount without doing an RFP. Okay, so um, is there anything you guys want to add? You just say okay. I know, I mean, I think it's fine. Okay. I don't know. Looks good. Yeah, I, I had to bike home too. <laughs> okay? okay. <laughs> it's not for me. I knew what I was getting into when I signed up for it this morning. She didn't want to put it in the back of my car. I'm positive. You can, I can't even lift it. it. It's so hard to lift, Zara. It's like, I just have to bike home. It won't take me long. It'll take me half an hour. And I have lights and everything. I've got my reflectors. got everything. It's nice and nice. Just watch those culverts. And it's a, and it's a, it's a full moon. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's a full moon. It's going to be a, what, I'm going to look like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm flying out my electric bike. No, no, no. I don't want to ride. I thank you, though, Randy. That's nice of you to offer. But you know what I will ask you to help me with is lifting the bike up the three stairs downstairs. Sure. I can't, it's so heavy. Okay, so is there any, um, is there any objection to this, anyone? I, I think no. it's fine. If you, if you feel like it's a good RFP, then yes, go ahead and submit I'll it. I'll make okay. a motion to submit that RFP. Okay, second. I'll second it. Okay, six seconds. All those in favor of this RFP, say aye. 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 Yay. Okay, so quickly about MERP. Um, so this MERP has literally been a roller coaster, mm -hmm. okay? They, after everything that we did for everything, right, two years, right, we've been counting on this. We've been like, yay, this is going to be so great. Um, then, uh, you know, we got that mini grant, the 4000 and then we um, had the, um, you know, where we applied for the three buildings, the town shed, the town hall, and the fire department, and they approved going to do energy audits for the town hall and the fire department. They did the energy audits. They presented us with a nice, um, report literally like a week later they say oh and we had so much interest which is so great it's so much interest that we're gonna limit this to the people who have the highest energy burden the 80 top people have the highest energy burden and Middlesex is not one of them so we were told we could not apply we weren't even eligible to apply so people like me got really mad and we said things like you know what's gonna happen this money's gonna be left on the table because people are not gonna to have their stuff together to apply for this. Like, what is going on? So enough people complained, especially those who had their energy audits in their hands. Enough people complained and they said, oh, well, we're just gonna open it up to everyone again. But the scoring is still, you get points for having a high energy burden. So we will not get points for that. So we will literally be scored on a rubric of how you know prepared we are. Now, the reality is that most towns are not as prepared as we are. And the reason we are prepared is because we've been working with the IA and EF wall, right? So we have literally numbers to, to plug in and say, this is how much it's gonna cost to do the insulation, this is how much it's going to cost to do, um, you know, um, uh, foaming, whatever, all that kind of stuff that, that, is, that can be allowed in this grant. Um, the heating system, that kind of thing. So, um, so a lot of these towns actually don't have their reports in hand, and so they're just making numbers up, right? And and so, um, and that, they, they know that's gonna happen, but I feel like from a preparation standpoint, we are ex as prepared as we possibly could be with our numbers and our narrative and, you know, um, the, the fact that like we are desperate for two heating systems. Are we gonna get 500? No, we're not, um, but could we get a couple hundred, 
I have my fingers crossed we might get something. So, um, it was an alarmingly easy grant to apply for, um, but it's due next Friday, and I'm actually gone all next week, but I literally accomplished it in like two hours. And then I attended the webinar, asked my questions that I had. There's a few other things that I have to add into it. Um, one thing that like I need to get I need to get understanding on, and maybe Randy, this is something you could provide a little bit more clarity on, but I'm hoping EF Wall can. Um, so the energy audits when they came back, they were like, your heating system, you know, a heat pump for the town hall will cost eight thousand dollars, and with a fifteen hundred rebate, it's six six thousand five hundred cost to the town. If Wallace Heat Pump and Ericsson, which was the company that BIA uses to do their preliminary um, cost estimates for this kind of work, had 75000 to 110000 And I'm like, okay, that's not a heat pump. That's something else. That's a heat pump plus what? All the duct work, all the... Um, the $8,000 cost is for a single source mini split. Yeah. Okay. It's not gonna. It's not gonna fulfill the needs of this building. Right. right. So wh why did he recommend that? No, I'm sorry. The town hall. That might have been for. I, I can't remember. It might have been. Um, no, that's what it was. It was. It was that. There was maybe a twenty thousand dollar item. It might have been a twenty thousand dollar item. That was um, like. Um, well, we can look at it. Yeah, I can. But at any rate. Um, it was a big enough discrepancy that I'm like, I can't just put down 75,000 when the report shows a much smaller number. But it's a real number, and it was actually, it also was less than Ericsson's um, for all of that. So at any rate, the good news is that EFL literally has a 10-page spreadsheet of everything broken down to like practically the bolts, right? And the nuts and bolts for everything. Um, so, um, so I did include in the MRF application a new roof as well because that is required. They probably won't accept that as part of it, but it is required to um, improve the thermal envelope for this place. The, the roof is considered as part of the thermal envelope. So at any rate, the good news is too that we will know as of October 21st whether or not. So it should be before the bond vote. I know that most people will have voted, or many people will have voted early ballot. Um, but I do have, I, this has given me a little more hope. And at the very least, if the bond fails, we will, and we get some MRF money, we will do what we can with that MRF money. Yes? So, uh, you're alone by October 21st. So I've drafted the warning for the bond vote that uh, includes a public but date is for the public hearing. I tentatively had the 29th, but then Susan Clark corrected me. It was a good change. I ran past the lawyer, put on a meeting for the fifth year, meeting for the 15th. Do you want me to move the hearing to the 22nd? Because if you move it to the 22nd, you'll have that information to give to The us. hope is we have that information. First they said October 18th, and then Sam said October 21st. Well, so I can't, you know, I don't know. If you get any more information by October yes. 1st, you guys are going to vote on that warning. So maybe that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Be able to tell people whether or not right, it would be nice mm -hmm. to tell people whether or not we're getting it. You can also move it back to the 29th. What happened? Why did Sarah say no? I mean, Susan say no to the 29th? Change the, change the law that used to be that you had to have a public hearing no fewer than five, no, no closer than five days to the vote, mm -hmm. no more than ten days to the vote. You had a small window. And then the legislature changed it largely because of the absolute early voting. People were like, "This is stupid. Everyone's already voted on stuff." You know, they yeah. like, so they gave you 30 days now before it votes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, my request is $537,000. Oh. Roughly, 537 is what I've requested in the grant. Um, and the good news too is that they only allow like 200 words, so like there's no long narratives. It's the easiest grant that I've ever had to do. But thankfully, because I had the numbers. It would be impossible if I did not have the numbers. So, um, so that's the update there. Okay. Next, moving along um, on the agenda is uh, um, orders. So everybody's seen those correspondence. Any correspondence, Sarah? No, we, I included it in the uh, the stuff that you guys. Okay. 
Oh, considering a right of way permit to install CB fiber cable under North Bear Swamp for Michael and Sarah Braun Hamilton, action likely. You guys have the application. Eric just looked it over and said that it works for him. Okay. Um, all you, if you guys approve it, then all you have to do is sign. Everybody, Everybody signs. Everybody signs, yep. And then so that will be our first right of way permit. Okay. Cool. Do we have to vote on it? Yep. Okay, is there a motion to approve the permit to use town right of way for Michael and Sarah Braun Hamilton? So moved. Is there a second? All second. Okay, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. So here's for you guys to all sign it. Um, and so let's see, any other matter that may come before the board? We're not that uh, far. I just ask you guys one thing. Uh, we have, um, you guys, we oh, have, we're not uh, going to decide this. We have a uh, board of evasion hearing. We're going to probably have three properties on our board of evasion hearing. And that's Blood properties? Three, well, uh, what is Gloria Field? She wants to continue her abatement. The Kyle the Weavers, and I think they want to continue their abatement. And uh, Linda Fenton is asking for the abatement. Let's keep, we'll put that aside. But anyway, um, no. the point is, usually we time yes. these things through some board meetings. No. Uh, yes. But I think that those three of board abatements, plus the fact that we're going to have a board of civil authority meeting, which is made, which is, you know, the lion's share of the board abatement. I would like to put that on a different date than the select board meeting. Sorry about me, but I just think it's just crowding too much. Yeah, okay. So is there a date that works? If you guys are meeting on the 1st and the, and the 5th and the 15th, is there a date that works for you? Is the 22nd, the 29th, either one of those? I would rather have the BCA um, before the I'm sorry, what? Are we talking October? Yep. 29th of October or 29th? 29th of October. Uh, well, didn't you just say that we're doing something else then? So well, you're also going to, you could, you could have, the, you, you're going to have to have a public, right now I tentatively have the public hearing scheduled for October 15th, but if on by the 1st Liz gets information that by the 21st she's guaranteed to have some, to, to know what happened with the grant, then you might want to move the hearing to the 22nd. Right. Um, okay, and we can just work on it there. I just need to know from your scheduling purposes, because I need to warn the other people in the, in the Board of Civil Authority, the listers, in the Board of Abatement, the Treasurer, let them okay. know. Is there a date that works for you? Because if you guys say, absolutely, can't do the 22nd. The 22nd so. would be fine with me, and I think it might be a good idea because maybe we'll have that information. I'd rather not do it on the 15th when I know for sure I don't have okay. that information. Okay, we're not talking about, we're talking about a Board of Abatement. No, I know, but couldn't we do both on that day? Yeah, sure. Do the board of abatement, so then we're all. Board of abatement and a hearing. Yeah, and a hearing. Want a motion? Yeah, would you? Yes, I think we should hold the uh, abatement meeting on uh, October 22nd, 2024. Come on, who's going to second it? You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't Zara seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the 22nd. So, <laughs> How official is that, sir? Well, that's really official. And then maybe up the public hearing at 630? Yeah. That will give you an hour and a half. Perfect. Okay. So 22nd is, I'm adding this to my thing, it's called... Um, BOA plus Board of Civil Authority. Okay, BOA. Plus BCA. Plus BCA. Plus the public hearing at 6.30 for the... Um, plus public hearing. For the, the town hall. So you would have regular meetings on the 1st and the 15th. And by Five way, Church Street. Do you, should we start budget, budget presentations? Do you want me to ask people to actually make presentations, or do you want? Why is, why is Cheryl dying? <laughs> I'm trying to get this all done. <laughs> it needs to be done. Plus the public hearing. Are you done? Would anyone like me to invite them to this? That would be wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to invite Randy. Randy, what's your email? Uh, Randy Curry at gmail. Cheryl, you can go. There's nothing keeping you. No, I uh, know. <laughs> she she's just getting the gigs. Said budget meetings. <laughs> All one word. Right? Seeing herself yes. on That's TV, you know. she's yes. getting yes. the gigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to know if you do you want to have the okay. fire department come okay, and present? Come do you want the highway department to come and present, or do you just want them to like submit a budget? Never done it before, so I Zara, what's your email? Past, we've had the big Zara ones like fire at gmail and com. highway present, yes. and then the small committees. We just submit. Okay, so I guess the question for Do you the use board a calendar? Is, huh? Do you use an electronic Jeff calendar? Jeff always accuses me of not giving him enough time. So I'm not going to invite you. So, 
Okay. I use the one in my. I'm listening. Okay, well, we can't have a meeting. We can't have a select board meeting on the 5th of November. Peter Hood. That's What's Peter Hood? It's Peter No. No, no. No. It's the only day I'm available. Why wouldn't you just. Do that. Just come and send that email, right? I'm glad you're available, Brady, because you'll be counting votes. That's right. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is oh. part of the counting calendars. Check the game schedule. Yeah. I haven't, actually. I don't think even a game is going to get you out of this one. All right, did everyone get it? BOA plus BCA plus public hearing. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, undeliverable. Uh, Peter uh, Hood at MiddlesexVermont.org. He never showed up. Mm -hmm. It's two meetings. Oh, you could do my Middlesex. Why didn't that come in? Oh, it's at org. Add to calendar. Done. Okay. All right. Um, so Sarah is asking us about budget, but people, the highway department and the fire department presenting their stuff. Do you want to do that in October or do you want to do it in their, this is their FY26 budget request. Do you want to do it in November? When does the select board want to get, start getting into budget season? Oh. January. No. <laughs> yeah, let's, um, uh, November. November. So November is the election on the 5th. Yeah, well, um, so she, Sarah's already asking us if we're even going to have a select board no, meeting not, on no, November. Be, no. You are not no, we're not having a select right. board meeting on that right. day. So let's start budget season the next meeting. October? No. The 19th? Of what? Of November? November? Yeah. Well, we could do it like the 12th. Do the 12th and you have a meeting on the 12th and the 19th. I'll add you, Vic. Is it Victor? Liz, do you want to do a select board what? meeting on the 12th? Victor. Dwyer. No, Vic. Vic? Yeah, no, VIC. No K. And is it, I always spell your last name wrong. Is it D W Y E R? No, D W I R E. Okay, that's what I mean. See? Yeah. Vic Dwyer at middle six. Very own email from Louis I would say this one. You're getting it. You're it's getting off. it, Vic. Nobody's answering, so it's good. I'm, I'm all okay. set with the 12th, too. All right, so we're going to do meetings on the 11th. I don't think I don't think you can skip one. And 11:19. And 11:19. Okay, and hold on, everybody. I need to add this to my calendar now. <laughs> Why don't you send us all <laughs> invitation <laughs> all at once? <laughs> okay, so you're saying November um, 12th and November 19th? Yeah. Correct. Correct. And we'll do. Uh, Wait, so Peter, still getting rejected. Why don't we do a highway on the 12th? Is that too early? Good. And the fire department on the 19th? Because that's their second meeting of the month. And we all write the year season. Oh, yeah. God. Did you hear that? Yeah. All right. I Let's do up. it in October. Wait, hold on. Select for a meeting. They'll fit. No. No, that Select for a meeting, Liz. What, December? Okay. No, I don't know but what highway, highway on the 12th and the fire department on the 19th? We'll just come in now that I have you all in here, it's easier. Randy, Zara. Are you done with those orders? Okay. Uh, yes, I read them. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. There's, there's three to sign in there, guys, so look for them. Zara, Vic. Is the meeting still on? Oh, hold on, everybody. Is there anything else that comes before the board? Yes. Nothing? No. Going on. once, going twice. Okay. Adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.